Hey everyone, welcome to Strange Stories, where we explore near-death experiences and supernatural stories from people who've had a glimpse of the other side. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Without further ado, let's get to the story of the day. Story number one. My first clear personal direct encounter with God, as I see it, occurred when I attended Electorium Rosicrucianum service shortly before Christmas in 2009. The topic was the birth of light, and I clearly felt the Holy Spirit's presence. Subtle, but undeniable. I was baptized in a rather liberal Baptist church in England in 1983, but the effects, while ecstatic at the time, did not last. For decades after that, I searched through various churches, liberal, moderate, and conservative, major denominations and free churches. I had taken courses at Esalen in California, learned NLP and hypnotherapy, attended Tony Robbins seminars, and studied New Thought, particularly Joseph Murphy's writings and attending Christian science meetings for a while. But nothing had satisfied me. Then, after another period of destitution and homelessness, I had a major heart attack at a free church run by a friend, a fellow engineer. As I lay stricken on a sofa, seeing the street lights outside through the large windows of the church building, he, my girlfriend, and another member prayed aloud for me, laying on hands. Initially, the pain subsided and I stood up to use the restroom. But the pain quickly returned, this time more intensely, and my friends began praying for me again. As I lay in excruciating pain on the sofa, thrashing from left to right, hearing their voices and seeing the orange light, an internal vision appeared to me. Jesus Christ, dressed in white light. Without realizing it, I asked how I could get the pain to go away, but I realized, as the Holy Spirit pointed out, that this was the wrong question. What must I learn? What must I take away from this experience? I asked. The pain vanished instantly, and my entire body felt warm. I stood up and exclaimed, Wonderful! My girlfriend later told me that she'd wondered, Why did he say wonderful? He just had a heart attack. I told my friends about my experience as they drove me to the emergency room. Only three days later, whilst laying in my hospital bed, I realized with another burst of ecstasy that I'd had the experience that Christians often refer to as being born again. My recovery was gradual at first, but I'm still suffering from high blood pressure. Many emotional issues are now being resolved in previously unthinkable and almost automatic ways. This NDE has been a blessing and I've become fascinated with the details of other people's NDEs and I've watched many YouTube accounts, particularly those of Howard Storm. I find both the differences and similarities fascinating and compelling and I believe both Christian and non-Christian NDEs are valuable. In this regard, I see myself as a Christian mystic, seeking direct experience of God rather than just knowledge of God as I perceive the evangelical movement to be. And I recognize that all of my previous experiences are also extremely valuable. There are many unanswered questions, and I recently realized that there will always be for everyone in this life, because we wouldn't be able to survive let alone fulfill our life's purpose if we remembered everything we knew before being born here. This is the source of major conflict among major religions and all spiritual pursuits, but it is necessary, if painful. At 50 years old, my life's purpose is finally clear to me, and for that I'm both profoundly grateful and somewhat daunted by the challenges, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Following my NDE, I practiced being aware of God's presence at times, sometimes constantly for a couple of days. On one occasion, a mentally ill man had been on the roof of a building in the Swiss city of Basel for 48 hours. All attempts by police and rescue crews to bring him down had failed, and he had continued throwing roof tiles to the street below, terrorizing the residents of the block as they darted quickly to and from the entrances of apartment buildings. I went to look and practiced the simple consciousness of God for less than five minutes, asking for nothing. During these five minutes, the police were able to trick, 
catch and safely bring down the man. Another time, I had been practicing God's presence for about 48 hours on and off when I awoke in my bed at around 1 a.m. Thinking about nothing in particular, I became aware of the strong presence of a being, a person in my room. I looked up and realized it was Christ, even though I couldn't see anything. I began to cry as I had. I got out of bed and knelt to pray, something I hadn't done since I was a child. As I did so, I felt the presence of three beings, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I realized later that this must have been similar to the experience that led to the teaching of the Trinity because it is not explicitly described in the Bible. I came to understand many previously incomprehensible things, including how to resolve many of the mental conflicts I had encountered and applied psychology studies I'd done, as well as why others failed to see or resolve these things. I value my remaining time on earth even more, and I'm even more driven to fulfill my life's divinely appointed purpose. I believe that many people, regardless of their previous or current beliefs, have had comparable experiences of spiritual rebirth, and that others who claim to be born again have not yet been, and all of these NDE accounts support this belief. Two other subsequent observations are that complete repentance and forgiveness of every last sin mistake, or error are required, and that the Father's wholehearted passionate love is the ultimate panacea for all problems. I'll write more about my ongoing experience one day. The changes, which were initially gradual, are now accelerating. Those that I had sought for decades through religion, spirituality, and psychology, namely, deep healing as well as the discovery and fulfillment of my life's purpose. For the time being, I'm simply grateful. Story number two. I was in the hospital because of preterm labor. Terbutaline was administered intravenously by the on-call physician. I didn't feel right, became very hot, and had barely said something doesn't feel right when I blinked out of my normal state of consciousness and into the void. My heart was stopped by the medication, I later learned. I was in a vast, dark, and peaceful place. I had no idea where I was, but I was fully conscious and no longer in my body. I tried to wiggle my toes and fingers, but discovered that I didn't have any. I knew I only existed as pure consciousness. When I became curious about why I was in the void, I heard a presence, the energy of another being. I'm not sure how I knew, but I did. Okay, so now what? I thought, after a long moment of trying to figure out where I was and what I was doing, whatever it was that I was doing. So, what should I do now? How long will I be staying here? What will happen next? Are you ready? said the being, but without audible words. I tried to figure out where the being was, but it seemed to be everywhere and nowhere, inside and outside of me. I couldn't figure it out. So I returned to the thought about the being I couldn't see, asking me, and realized it meant, are you ready to leave this life? For what seemed like an eternity, I pondered that question. Sensing my distress, the being sent me a thought to consider. While a vision of my life played before my eyes, except for the part where I started having children, I saw childhood scenes, scenes with my parents and scenes with other children and adults. When I saw loving scenes, I felt great joy, and when I saw angry scenes, I felt great sadness. After that portion of my life review, I felt like I'd made a shambles of things and was ready to let go and move on. Are you certain you're ready to go? The being asked again. Well, yes, I thought to myself. I believe I'm prepared. The being then sent me more visions of my life, and I saw my two oldest children, and then I remembered my body was very pregnant with another child somewhere. The being showed me what the baby girl would look like when she was two. Within a single heartbeat, the projector began to play again. It had previously felt as if the projector had simply turned off, and I was back in my body. I could hear the nurse trying to communicate with me. She was calling my name and putting her hand on my face. I didn't want to be back, and I was completely perplexed by what had just occurred. My first thought was to wonder how I could lose consciousness without losing consciousness. 
The nurse's voice, which had seemed so far away at first, grew closer and closer until I opened my eyes and saw the light again. I asked her what happened and she just said I passed out. Nobody talked about it the rest of the night. My best friend was with me and they told her not to talk about it with me. I didn't tell anyone about my experience for a long time because I didn't understand what had happened. My regular OBGYN saw me 24 hours later and told me that when they gave me the medication, it stopped my heart and they had to call code blue. Later that day, my best friend confirmed that when I appeared to lose consciousness in my physical body, they called code blue and escorted her out of the room. She stated that because of my condition, she was advised not to discuss the incident with me at all, lest I go to preterm labor again. Many years passed before I confided in a therapist who claimed I had an NDE. I noticed that clairaudience, some clairvoyance, claircognizance, and clairsentience had become a growing part of my normal existence soon after the birth of that baby and the experience. I was able to see spirits and communicate with them more clearly than before. Previously, I could see them but could not speak to or hear them. I remember being curious but never afraid in the void. I felt so at peace and the darkness seemed infinite but not in the least bit frightening and I've been terrified of the dark before. I recall that the moment I felt love for my children, I returned to my body despite having told the being that I was ready to leave. What I wanted didn't matter when I realized I had commitments to keep with those children. I wanted to return at that time, and so I did.